So here's a saying for you. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, welcome to Washington. Welcome to America's long-standing bipartisan trouble distinguishing global friend from foe from out-and-out -out con artist. Whether it's South Vietnamese despots, Pakistani dictators, Vladimir Putin's soul, wherever that is, American presidents, Democrat and Republican, have embraced them all only to regret it later. The Bush administration launched the Iraq war in part on bogus intelligence from one Ahmed Chalabi, who wanted to be prime minister of Iraq. He still does. And now many believe he is conning Washington again. Here's Brian Todd. He had President Bush's ear, was a guest at the State of the Union address. He relentlessly campaigned for America to throw Saddam Hussein out under the premise that Iraq had the world's deadliest weapons. I believe that the U.S. will find Iraqi weapons of mass destruction. They certainly found the software. We have been talking to many of the scientists who were uh, uh, involved in these programs. and They confirm the manufacture of those weapons. Ahmad Chalabi's pronouncements and the intelligence he fed to U.S. officials influenced the Bush administration's decision to invade. And the information was spectacularly bogus. Now, Chalabi is being talked about as a serious contender to replace Nouri al-Maliki as Iraq's prime minister. The very idea brings back bad memories for some American observers. This is a crazy world, and I can't really believe this is a good leader for Iraq. On every single issue, he was either dishonest, self-promoting, or, you know, vengeful towards his previous enemies. And I just saw nothing good in the man. Chalabi had American military and political leaders thinking the Iraq war would be a cakewalk. Later, he was accused of tipping the Iranians off to American intelligence secrets and effectively banned from the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. He denied the claims. Before the war, Chalabi was convicted and sentenced in a massive bank fraud case in Jordan and escaped to London. The questions about Chalabi's credibility are serious enough, but in this contorted political climate in Iraq, there are also serious concerns over how effective he would be as prime minister. During the war, Chalabi, who's Shia, headed up the effort to push top Sunni leaders out of their jobs. But despite that, a spokesman for popular Shiite cleric Muqtada al-Sadr told us Sadr's followers, a key bloc in Iraq's parliament, believe Chalabi's a viable candidate who can work with Sunnis and unite the government. James Jeffrey, former U.S. ambassador to Iraq, likes Chalabi, calls him courageous, and says in the current spiral of violence, there aren't great alternatives. Iraq is disintegrating before our eyes. This is a, a total emergency situation. The only way out of this thing, and there's only limited chances of that, is for Iraq to find a replacement to Prime Minister Maliki. If he's the lowest common denominator, let it be. Let's give this guy a chance. How does the Obama administration feel about Ahmad Chalabi possibly becoming Iraq's next leader? The White House and the State Department say it's not the role of the U.S. to support any candidate. Our efforts to get Ahmad Chalabi himself to comment for this story were not successful. Brian Todd, CNN, Washington. So as you heard Brian mention there, keeping track of Ahmed Chalabi, who spent decades in and out of the shadows, is no easy job. Investigative journalist Aram Rostin has done it better than most. He currently writes for BuzzFeed and has authored perhaps the book on Mr. Chalabi, the man who pushed America to war, the extraordinary life adventures and obsessions of Ahmed Chalabi. Aram, I got to say, you know, I, I was there for the invasion when U.S. troops were looking for weapons of mass destruction. I was there after the invasion when there were no weapons of mass destruction. I was there a year later when U.S. forces were part of a raid on Chalabi's home because they no longer trusted the guy. And now, 10 years later, he's in the mix to be prime minister? It it's dumbfounding. It is dumbfounding, but he's, he's an astonishing fellow. He's, he's got drive that most people uh, can't even fathom. You know, it seems like he's not particularly well-liked or trusted in the U.S. anymore. He's not particularly well-liked or trusted in Iraq. So how is it that, he, you know, he's got one seat. His party's got one seat in the parliament, and it's his. So how is he positioning himself to perhaps be the next prime minister? Well, I don't think the, U the U.S. is almost uh, irrelevant in, uh, right now uh, in this process that they're using to choose the prime minister. Virtually everybody, except for Nouri al-Maliki, wants to replace Nouri al-Maliki. There's this wide consensus that they need to, uh, to, to uh, change prime ministers there, but he won the most votes. Uh, he's, he won the plurality of votes. Chalabi has positioned himself the way he always did by this brilliant, brilliant horse trading he does. He's able to, to form these alliances with people he once, he once fought with. 
um, with former enemies, and he's, he's, he's brought them into his camp. And he really has... It's astonishing to me, too, because I wasn't really... I wasn't uh, prepared to believe it, but, but I now do. He's convinced some Sunni leaders that he's a consensus candidate and that he's, that he's overcome his, his previous antipathy to, uh, to the Ba'athists and to the Sunnis, and he's... He's convinced the Kurds to support him, some Kurds to support him. So his trick will be, can he build up enough seats in Parliament to support him as Prime Minister? And then, of course, is the issue that you dealt with in, in the piece. Would he, would he make any difference? Could he be a leader? Is, he, is anything he said believable and, and all that? You know, Aram, a lot of times with Ahmed Chalabi, you worry that a lot of the spin or the stories about him are coming from him. Is he spinning this notion that he's a viable candidate? You just said you actually believe it could happen. Oh, I'm not saying he's a, he's a great candidate, but I believe he is doing a, a good job at, at gathering support, even by, f from some Sunni leaders. I mean, as, I, as uh, we wrote in, in BuzzFeed, he has got Sunni, some Sunni support, limited Sunni support. But some people believe he's just some sort of a consensus candidate. Now, he has no constituents in the, street, in the streets of Iraq. When, when, he's, when there have been votes... Uh, when there have been elections where there's a popular vote, he's, he's won less than uh, 1% of the popular vote. So he somehow, but he's, he's, he's got the support of the Sadrists. We all remember Muqtad al-Sadr, who, whose troops fought the Americans. He's got the uh, support of other uh, Sunni Shiite, uh, uh, Shiite clerics, and he has some limited support from Sunnis. And so it's, it's odd to be somebody looking at this sort of political, this political process in Iraq and, and judging it from here. But there are some who believe he's one of the very few credible candidates because there are so few. It's almost as if who else could it be? Perhaps the least bad option in politics right. that often wins. Aaron Rostin, great to have you with us. Really appreciate it.